attacker with the Citadel Defense. Uh, so I read an article a couple days ago here, and I've been meaning to make a video about it, and just haven't been able to get around to it till now. It was a case of a home invasion, and this crazy naked lady breaks into a house at night, screaming something like, I am the devil. Uh, the man of the house, the husband, retrieves his firearm, which, good so far, okay. And then, proceeds to fire 39, 3, 9, warning shots, not 3 to 9, 39, warning shots. Uh, after that, gets into a fight with this woman, like a physical fight, a wrestling fight. Uh, and his 12-year-old son ends up uh, jamming a wrench in the lady's neck, and that puts an end to the fight. I'm not sure how you jam a wrench in someone's neck. It sounds brutal, though. So, what went wrong here? Right? How did, how did we get here? So, uh, the more I thought about this story, and the more I talked to some of my friends about it, and talked to my wife about it, the more I thought, this is a story that illustrates what happens when you don't have the training and more importantly the mindset to use your firearm. This is the result you get when you're not trained and you don't have the right mindset to use your firearm. Right? So first thing, firearms are not primarily a posturing tool. And when I say posturing, what I mean is an intimidation tool. Right? They are not primarily a posturing tool in order to scare someone off. Can they be used that way? Yes. They're used that way uh, hundreds of thousands of times a year, every year, okay? Every year, right, there's somewhere between 750,000 to 2 million defensive gun uses a year, right? And then when we say defensive gun use, most of the time what that means is someone pulled out a gun, the bad guy said, mm, don't want to mess with that, and they leave and go the other way. That, that's a defensive gun use. That's what we call that, okay? Gun saved your life. Because you had a gun, your life was saved. So, um, they are used as posturing tools, a lot, okay? But, if you only use it as a posturing tool, if, if that's its primary purpose to you, you shouldn't be carrying that. Uh, and, and this story illustrates why, right? 39 warning shots, 40 less one. 39 warning shots, okay? <clears throat> if they did not get scared off by the first one, what makes you think they'll be scared off by the 24th one? For the 25th time, I'm really serious now, you better leave. Pow. Right? So, uh, like there, there's, just, there's obviously an unwillingness to use the firearm for what it's for, which is a tool to defend your life, right? by incapacitating the person who is putting your life in danger, right? Or in this case, your wife and your kids or whatever. Okay, so that, that, that's, that's the first thing. There, there are four typical responses that people have, or not typical, there are only four responses that you can have when faced with danger, right? The first is posturing. I'm gonna get tough, I'm gonna act big, and I'm gonna scare you into backing down, okay? Second one is submitting. The second one is okay, you know, we'll give you whatever you want, okay, or I'm sorry I came here, I'll leave, or whatever, right? Submitting, it's a submissive posture. The third one is uh, flight, right? I'm gonna get out of here. And the fourth one, of course, is fight, right? So you always hear fight or flight. There's fight, flight, posturing, and, and submitting. Those, those are the four responses you can have, okay? And typically, do you know what every human being's, by every, I mean most human being's first one is that they're gonna pick? It's posturing, okay? If you guess posturing, you give yourself a gold star. Uh, that, that's our first response. Then we'll submit, then we'll flee, then we'll fight. Fighting is usually last. Most of us hesitate to go to the fight last. Uh, there's more about that, about how if you jump to fighting and get inside someone's OODA loop, come take a class, we'll talk about that. But my point is, uh, the posturing is our first default. And I'm not saying posturing is necessarily wrong. I'm saying if that's all you got, it's not gonna be good enough, as illustrated by this case, right? Because now you're shooting off 39 warning shots. Where are those bullets going, is my first question. That's 39 rounds that you sent out into the world that you're accountable for. The second thing that one of my buddies pointed out, and I think this is interesting, is who is prepared enough to have 39 rounds ready to fire, which by the way, if you have a full size gun, right, 17 rounds in that mag, that's at least three mags. You had a gun loaded, you emptied it in warning shots, you reloaded it, 
you emptied it in warning shots, and you reload it again. That's 39 warning shots with a full size mag or a full size gun. So if you had something slightly smaller, that might be more mag changes. But 39 warning shots, it's insane. And again, if the first one didn't do it, why would why would the 38th one do it, right? Never fire a warning shot. Again, come take a class. We'll talk about that. So uh, who's prepared enough to have that many rounds but not actually be willing to use them? And my answer is someone who is untrained and doesn't have the right mindset. And the right mindset, so training, that's obvious. Take a training course from a quality, uh, competent instructor. Be it me, be it someone else, whatever. You got you got to take a, a training course that... that from a competent instructor that teaches you how to use a firearm. You also need to take a training course from a competent instructor that teaches you proper mindset. A proper mindset in this circumstances is being willing to shoot another human being who's putting your life in danger. That, that's, that, that's what happens, right? If someone puts my life in danger or my wife or my kids or, or whatever, I'm out with my buddies, uh, you have to be willing to go the distance. And if you're not, you probably shouldn't carry a gun because otherwise you end up sending 39 bullets out into the world and you're accountable for every single one of them. What if one of those bullets would have went out his window into his neighbor's house and hit his uh, neighbor's daughter, right, when she's sleeping? That's bad. That's a loss, right? Because you were too, uh, dare I say, mentally weak uh, to be able to shoot the person who's putting your life in danger. And I don't necessarily want to knock this guy too much because I think he's untrained and I don't, I don't think he knows. And, and I don't think he has the, the mindset or the training to be able to deal with the situation that he was presented with. Uh, so I don't want to rag on him too hard, but 39 warning shots is completely unacceptable and, and, and horrible, okay? Uh, the third thing, and honestly probably the most sad one to me, is because you as, as a dad, and, and as a dad I, I feel this the most, failed to deal with that problem. You had the tools and the equipment and you failed to adequately protect your family by shooting this crazy lady who was in your house. Uh, you had to get into a fight with her, you had to wrestle with her, and then your 12-year-old son had to finish the job. And uh, that's the toughest part. Y you should not be putting your 12-year-old in that position where he has to do that. He got in that position because of your failure to adequately deal with the situation when you had the chance. So because you were unwilling to shoot someone who was putting your life in danger, your son had to do it, right? That, that's basically what this boils down to. And that's sad. I mean, really, that, that makes me sad. And and you, uh, that kid is going to be scarred one way or another about that. And it's his dad's fault. It's his dad's, I hate to say it, but it's his dad's fault. If he would have adequately dealt with the problem, we would have never been here. Okay? So, get training. Have a proper mindset. Be willing to use your firearm. And if you're not, you got to find some other tool, guys. Do brave deeds and endure.